What's up guys? Just opened a package here. Um, read the note, let's see, actually, let me open the box here. I opened it upside down, that's the problem, I opened it upside down. But anyway, um, I noticed that it was a Yabo, so I wanna turn the camera on for you and, and share what's going on inside. So first, let me find the, the notes. There was a note here. Oh, fighting for it. There it is, okay. So, yeah, see Yabo right on top. You got a ton of stuff in here. All right, so let's, uh, let's take it out. And by the way, this is from Canada. You will notice by a couple of the uh, items in here, uh, this is a, an awesome package from up north. So, first we have some Calypso sauce. Picante sauce Calypso. Hot, hot, hot. I have never seen this before. Uh, Matooks, maybe? Matork? Matooks, I'm going to go with. Sounds really good, though. Always down for some uh, some good hot sauce, which, by the way, I will have some hot sauce videos with Vinny in the future. Uh, it's hard, you know, aligning everyone's schedules and stuff, but you will eventually see that. Let's see, what's this? We have NHL All-Stars. Very cool. There we go. All right, I was going to say, I know this, this uh, open squares to show something. So, NHL All-Stars, 2001, stamp and medallion set. Wow, look at this. So we have a commemorative stamp, stamp set for, let me, I'm, I'm kind of hunched over underneath the viewfinder because it's hard to see things through there. I do not know this player, but there's also a coin that goes with this. So you have a really cool set of stamps here. I'm going to be careful, I do not want to crease it. So we have very cool stamps and a commemorative coin. Bobby Hull. Don't know the player. I did watch hockey for a couple years back in the day. I was a Rangers fan. I don't know if they ever mentioned that. They probably did. Um, me and my friends were so much Ranger fans that we had it shaved into our heads. <laughs> the word Rangers. This is really cool though. I love stuff like this. I mean, obviously the coin is awesome. I'm not specifically a stamp collector, but that is really cool. Actually, my grandfather collected stamps. Uh, he was a big fan of uh, ducks. So he had a bunch of different stamps uh, with different duck themes and stuff, wildlife stuff. But yeah, that's really cool. Like that. We have, <laughs> look at this, a mini open all. I actually have one of these. This seems, it seems really old. Like the actual packaging just seems like it's really old. Made in France, of course. But I love that little keychain open all. It's really cool. Actually, Christina might take this for me. So I actually have a little one that I do use occasionally by my desk. That is really awesome. We got some more coins in here, it looks like. Oop, and maybe some matches. Check these out. I don't know, open some side, does it? Oh no, this side. Whoa. That's different. Oh, I like this. All right, so it, it sits upright. You push through here. I'm glad I didn't dump all those out. And actually, the box is designed to stop there. That's really cool. And you can kind of maybe tap one out. All right, put the box back in. Where's the striking pad? Oh, on the bottom. All right, I'm not going to waste the match, but I like that. That's cool. That is different. Something else. My grandfather loved to travel. This is my father's father. And uh, everywhere he went, he always brought back some matches. So uh, when he passed away, he had a whole drawer full of matchboxes, which was really cool. But yeah, I like that. We got a couple Canadian coins here. 25 cents from 1973. And 50 cent coin from 71. That's awesome. Very cool. Love it. I put this off the side here. There's a ton of stuff in here. All right, so the next thing I want to check out, let's see, we have a Mora in here, an old-fashioned Mora. But this is a really cool, very cool little knife. I love it. I love the old design. It's really, really simple, but you know what? Stuff like this works. We love our modern-day cutlery. Uh, but back, back in the day, I mean, what they had worked fine. But that is awesome. That's really cool. I like that. Let's put that off to the side. We have a little camp-type knife. Let's see here. 
PAL. That's interesting. So the kind of markings we have on our tang. Zoom in. We can see together. So, oh, PAL Cutlery. PAL Cutlery Co. That sounds really familiar. Made in the USA. Oh, man. When you look at knife history, there's a lot of companies that merged and changed their name and all kinds of stuff. PAL sounds very familiar. I do not know offhand, though, who they turn into or if, you know, it was a, a subsidiary of another company or something like that. But that's awesome. That is really cool. It's neat. Oh, let's see. There's no more markings on this side as well. It's just the same stuff. Let that focus. Yeah, pow cutlery. Same thing. So both blades are individually marked. Very cool. So I'm going to try to find some more information out about this knife. That's why I collect all those, uh, you know, value and guidebooks and stuff for just such an occasion. So I'll have a cool little research project. This is awesome. Very cool knife. Love it. Put that off the side. We got some goodies here, looks like. Coordinates. Oh, see, this is French. I have no idea. Product of Quebec. Um, now we're going to attempt it. This looks like... Look like... Uh, I don't know. It's going to smell through the box. Nope. Can't smell through the box. Oh, it's right there. All I do is flip it around. Maple products. I love maple flavor, by the way. So, these sound really good. So, it looks like it's maybe like in an ice cream cone. I don't know if they come to a point or if it's layered in there. But it looks like just some kind of maple cream inside of a, you know, a sugar cone or something. That sounds really good. So I have to try those later on. Appreciate that a great deal. Oh, here's the lore. Their best lore. Very cool. Red Wolf. All right. Double treble hook. Big old uh, bill on the front. I don't know if I've ever seen this brand before. But... Super cool. I will definitely give this a shot. I much appreciate that. Uh, speaking of fishing, uh, just yesterday I went up to visit my parents and my great uncle Jeff was there. Um, he's, he's an awesome guy. He, uh, he did a lot of ice fishing when he was younger. And uh, last year we found uh, some tip-ups. Uh, tip-ups that were in my grandfather's possession because this is my, uh, my grandfather's half-brother. And uh, some of those tip-ups were his when he was a kid. He thought it was really cool. So he actually refurbished them. He brought them back. We were super bummed when he was able to come visit because he has a tight schedule too. Um, but when he was actually able to come visit, we were going to go ice fishing. But the pond was like half open water and the actual ice that was on top was maybe a half inch thick. So obviously that wasn't going to happen. But hopefully in the future, you know, we could do a video together or something. He can show me some old school ice fishing. But anyway, love fishing stuff. I can't wait until I can get back out on the water or on the hard water, as some people say. So we'll see. But And then this is the, the last thing in the package. We got a couple more knives in here. Let's see. This one. Get a zoom on that. I want to say it's an Okapi knife just because of the lock system. And it is. I have never actually had one of these I've had an original copy, but it was a totally different pattern. That's really cool. So I'm not exactly sure. I guess it's just a like a pick lock. Because the old copies usually have like a almost a ratcheting system, like a gear on the back of the knife blade, and then there's a ring attached here, so you pull the ring. And if you uh, if you haven't seen those knives, I mean Cold Steel makes a, a copy of it. I'm not actually sure how to, let me Okay, so it's non-locking. So this back this is a different style that's smaller, so you can't just fold it in. So that the tank pushes that back out. That's really cool. So instead of having like a um, traditional slip uh, slip joint type pattern in there with that spring tension, it's on the outside. So it is technically a slip joint. That's awesome. I love that. It's really, really nicely finished wood. Super, super smooth. Almost feels like plastic. But that's definitely, it's got to be wood. That, that feels like wood to me. Um, that's cool. That's awesome. little bale. I love it. And then this knife, what is this? Quality Cutlery Ryko? Let me see, let me zoom in. This looks like a, <laughs> the style here is almost like a, I have a German knife I got from, uh, from Arthur Bream. Really, really nice. I use it all the time. It's a, considered a breakfast knife. It has basically a spatula style on the front. You know, so for breakfast you can kind of 
grab your butter or cream cheese or whatever you're doing, spread it on your, your bagel or your bread, your toast, whatever, whatever you're having for breakfast. But you have a nice sharp cutting edge as well to cut through things. But yeah, let me zoom in a little bit more. Make sure I get this to focus. Yeah, Ryko. I don't think I've ever heard of them before. Made in. And the other part's covered. Hold on, let's see. Let me get a zoom in there. Made in. Can't read it. If I fold it a little. There we go. Made in something. Slovenia? Slovakia? Czechoslovakia is my guess. It could be something different. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Czechoslovakia, which is very cool. One of my favorite things made in Czechoslovakia is the pipe tools, the original Czech tools. That is really cool. I'm going to have to research this knife too because I've never seen this before. What's also awesome is this uh, handle scale looks like a tortoise shell. And I'm assuming it's a celluloid. I'm not sure exactly how old this specific knife is, but it's more than likely not genuine tortoise shell. It's kind of like uh, elephant tusk. It's just one of those band materials you can't use. But if you get a knife old enough, you can probably get one with the, you know, the real material on there. But it's just a really cool look. Awesome. So thank you so much. This package was really, really cool. I appreciate it. Um, you know, in past videos, I've said that I have awesome fans all around the world. And I don't mean to specify certain countries because people are cool everywhere. But I get a lot of love from up north. So thank you very much to all the Canadian viewers. It's funny, it reminds me of a conversation I had last week with someone. Uh, they were talking about, you know, one state was so beautiful and another state was so crappy. And I asked them where they went, and in one state they went to a city, and in the other state they went to the country. Uh, pretty much every state in the United States has beautiful areas. They have urban areas, they have cities, they have country. You know, every state provides a little bit of that both ways. Uh, and in the same respect, every place around the world has really nice people and then some really crappy people. <laughs> but it just seems that all my experience with Canadians uh, have all been positive. So. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.